two o'clock and oh, well according to my watch and um, it's time for the lunch and learn I'm hoping that uh, today being a Wednesday you are well into the week and everything else is as you want it to be my name is Prosper Taruvinga guys and I'm reporting live uh, from Live Long Digital in Melbourne where we are you know, on the trenches trying to help people to market, scale and grow their businesses so that they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if this is your first time hanging around um, uh, our Lunch and Learns, you will realize that um, it will go on for 30 minutes and we will be talking greatly about stuff that's actually happening that will help you uh, market your business so that it becomes profitable and enjoyable. I noticed Jeff. Jeff, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to last, um, you know, for the whole 30 minutes because today I think we're going to make history. Um, today is a day that I want you to take particular note and this is probably the first time you're going to hear this anywhere else on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, I would want to welcome you to what is now called the social prosperity age. I'm going to repeat that again. All right, take note of this. This is something you're going to be seeing going around the internet for a long time to come. This is now a period I would like to coin the social prosperity age. Okay, we are way past the information age now, which is where people were creating courses, putting out content on the internet. We have now been ushered literally overnight into what is now called the social prosperity age. Now, I'm going to explain to you what the social prosperity age is. Social prosperity age is an age in which... Uh, Rick says, hey, I coined it first. Seriously, sounds great. <laughs> great. Now, social prosperity age... Jimbo, how's it going, man? Today, we're making history here today, right here, right now. Hang in there, buddy. Um, I want you to start noticing this is now the social prosperity age. In as much as... The more social you are, the more prosperous you're going to be. It's no longer an edge where you hide behind the logo. It's no longer an edge where you just put out content and then people come back to you. I'm sorry if that's what has been happening, but slowly I'm seeing that the more people, the more connections you have, that's the more money that is actually going to come and uh, translate into um, you know your, your, your bottom line. Okay? We have grown up with the internet, some of us, and some of us have just started using the internet where you would go there and find information. But as I have noticed, we have now gone into what is now called the social prosperity edge where people that are actually doing well on the internet can now actually relate because you know why? They're providing value to others, okay? People now want people they can trust. People want people that are reliable, that are always consistent, and those that are going to be there. The more you're going to be hiding behind the logo, the more it's going to be difficult for you to penetrate the market as we know it. If you think I'm kidding, look at how much influencer marketing has been on the rise. Bigger companies are paying smaller bloggers or smaller people to actually penetrate the market. They know that their logo means nothing to the everyday customer today. Social prosperity, entrepreneurship or the social prosperity edge. You're welcome, guys. This is one step for just us, but it's now going to be a big shift for humanity. And I am so excited to be helping you move into this transition and help you start scale and grow in an age that is so totally going to be different to what we're used to. Okay. Um, what if you're kicking ass on flying? Of course, that is actually working. The more people you're connected with, the better it is going to start working for you. Now, Rick says, agreed, ditched my company name and I'm using my personal brand instead. If you're not out there communicating, relating, and creating for people, you are definitely lost. Like, um, like I say, totally agree, my friend. Thank you so much. Are you wearing some pants there? I've heard stories about you not wearing pants. I can show you. I've got pants on. <laughs> Jimbo says, of course. Guys, 
Let me tell you something. I'm speaking to a lot of people and they're finding it difficult to connect to their customers. And what's happening is because they have not been relating to the people they're sending a message to. This is now an edge where everyone has a smartphone and if you're not calling out their name, if you don't know what their puppy name is, you cannot influence them or you cannot relate to them. All right. I put up a post in the morning there just so that I could, you know, put my mind around what it is that I want to talk about. And I put up a quote that I say, the only way you can actually influence yet another person is to show them what they want and how they can get it. If you're not doing that in your marketing, in your message, and to the people that actually relate to you, you are losing the game, all right? Steven says it's happening. You know how many people are actually getting paid to deliver a book? How many people are you seeing advertising right now saying, I'll, I will pay you $20 to read this book. I'll give you $20 if you sign up to this. It's no longer about the information. We've had information overload on the market. Now people really want things that they can implement, people that can hold their hand and go there. Now, if your business is not transitioning and if you're not creating a personal brand that is working with people and no longer hiding behind courses or logos or whatever, I think you really need to reconsider your marketing and if you really want to live beyond next year. All right. Do you realize a long time ago, people used to line outside to get mobile phones and things like that because that was prestigious. People were killing each other, climbing all over each other to get information. Um, free book, just pay shipping. <laughs> Fred, I'm so excited you're on here today. And welcome, my friend, to now the social prosperity edge. And I'm glad to welcome you as, as, as you know, a fellow Melbourneian. Angela, love you, babes. I see you doing your work there. You're doing your own social prosperity. Let's get amongst it, all right? Because if you're just going to hide behind the logo, if you're just going to hide behind your course, people now really need somebody to hold their hand, tie their shoelaces, show them how to get from A to B without all this bullshit. If anyone wants information, they can just Google it, all right? Now they need somebody who knows where they're going, knows how they're going to take them there, and knows exactly how they feel and how they went out of that particular situation. So if you want to create and relate with people, you now really got to create your own personal brand. You can then create products out of that brand, but you're still the same person that people can always come to and can relate to. All right. Um, I value the way you show up. I'm going to do the same. Of course, Angela, because we're now in the social prosperity age. If I don't show up for my people, then what if somebody is not ready to buy today, maybe tomorrow, but they want to know that in six months, they could always come back and prosper or you are going to be there. All right. Not everyone is your customer today and not everyone is your customer tomorrow. But when they do want to show up, you got to be there for them. All right. Angela said, I left my teaching position and now full time entrepreneur. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Let's all give Angela a big round of applause. Because obviously now she's going in for her own passion and now she's going to go and, you know, be, do and have whatever she's always worked for. Your two boys are so going to be proud of you because you've taken the leap. And now what you got to do is create that brand so that you're going to be there for them. OK, you know what? I speak to a lot of um, entrepreneurs and people like that. And too many of them, you know, I still know that they believe if they've got a great idea or if they've got a, you know, good good startup idea, that is what is going to put them through. You know what? Ideas are a dime a dozen these days. It's it's worth nothing alone. You know what I mean? If, if, if there is no execution from the entrepreneur, it's worth nothing alone if the entrepreneur is not present. Okay? Angela says, thank you, live streaming all the way plus YouTube content. <laughs> Alrighty then, that's the only way you're going to be... Um, you know, talking and really interacting with your people. Anyone can copy and paste a blog. That whole content thing, era, edge has done. 
Welcome to the Social Prosperity Air, and I'm so excited about this. I've just put in the Prosperity Big Day, you know why? Because, yeah, yours truly loves their name, you know what I mean? So, like I was saying, guys, ideas are totally a dime a dozen, and if you're not selling yourself these days, you have lost the game already, okay? So, selling yourself is much more important than you having an idea, because then people are now buying from people that they know, like, and trust, okay? People want to relate. People want to know that are you the right person who is capable of, you know, steering this plane or this ship? They just don't want to jump on board when somebody is still learning, okay? Nothing will happen these days without massive action. <laughs> Great stuff, Steve. I know you've, you've got your way, man. You, you, you and I have been reading and, you know, finding all these things. Action is the only thing that makes a difference in the social uh, prosperity edge because people will notice when work is being put in, all right? People will notice where sweat has been on. Okay, these days it's easy because you know what? People can just have a couple of clicks on, on the internet, see where else you've been except where you want to show them. And you know, you're just as good as what Google says you are. And if you haven't been putting in the work to either connect, relate, and create, did you hear that? That was the sound of crickets. Sorry, we don't have visual effects in, in a live scenario, but then it would have been like... If you're not creating, relating, and, 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 and relating to the people that you're expecting to get money from in the social uh, prosperity age, it's never going to happen. Even in the corporate age, guys, even in, in the work environment, you know what I mean? You know, all the experts, they've realized that, you know, for a long time, people actually perceive how vital you are in a career by the amount of people that actually are subordinated to you. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how useless, you know, some, you know, um, managers are, but if people actually respect them and they're following them and listening to them, they still get promoted. All right. So, you know, and then when you come now into the entrepreneur world, you know, your, your whole perception is equally critical. Except in the world, in, in this entrepreneur world, you don't have managers. Your managers are going to be your team members. Your managers are going to be your, your um, you know, the entrepreneurs that you're working around with, investors, the customers that are actually voting for you to be there. Do you know what I mean? So um, if you Google yourself and not dominating the top 10 positions, <laughs> you're not executing enough. Exactly, man. You're not doing enough. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick rundown of what I feel is going to be happening within the social entrepreneurial, um, you know, edge that we're sort of um, coming into. If you've got an idea right now, that's cool. All right. But an idea is just an idea. You got to execute on it. All right. You want to use your, your business idea to kickstart whatever relationships you're going to have either with the customers presenting to them, you know, whatever message you have to them. That's the idea. They have to buy into that. And people won't buy into an idea or trust you or think anything of you if you're not really showing up. All right. So your ability to promote yourself and to learn from others will then determine your ultimate success. You could have an idea. Guys, these days, as long as you've got a laptop and a pair of, um, what do you call them, track pads, you can be an entrepreneur. But if you can't sell your idea to the next person, sell your vision to the next person, or sell your expertise or whatever it is that you've got, no one is going to come around and support that. You know what I mean? And some people are being very romantic about just the idea in as much as they're not even pursuing the skills that they need to develop that idea into being. If you can't speak, then you can't be doing these live videos. If you can't write, then how are you going to blog? If you can't connect to people, how are you going to sell? You know what I mean? There's Udemy courses that you can buy for, I think, $10 or whatever. Just go in and figure out what your weakest link is and then just go and perfect that. And once you know exactly what's happening, you go in there and you start outsourcing. All right? So that you leave time and room for you to actually connect and relate. Because if you don't know who you're selling to, then there's no point in you talking at all. 
You know what? And Ray Ring says, yikes, I still have yet to go live. You got to, man, because the more, the more you're not putting it out there and connecting and relating to people, you know, the less people are going to know about you. And every second day, somebody else is coming in, showing up and taking your money. And that's money you're never going to bring back. You know what I mean? So, you know, entrepreneurs, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, especially in this social prosperity era, you need to have leadership skills. You need to have an ability to work with teams. Actually, listen. This is how you listen these days, guys. Listen. Right there. Watch what people are saying and listen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then you got to have the ability... To, to relate to other people. You got to have the ability to coach other people. You know what I mean? Which is how you then learn. Because if you can't teach anything, then you haven't grasped it enough. So you also got to be able to, 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 to present so well that your advisors, um, you know, your, your, your customers, anybody else who's going to buy your idea or from you understands your passion, understands where you're at, and they're socially responsible to make you rich. And you got to put that out in them, you know? And these days, like I was saying, networking and, you know, working with people that have already been there, seeking out mentors and all that jazz. That's the social prosperity edge, guys. And I'm so excited because you know what? I don't know. I got ready for it. Are you ready for it? Yeah. <laughs> and they're making it so difficult for people to be poor these days. Facebook is making it so difficult for people to be poor. There are so many ways that you can reach out to people. If you cannot do a live video like this, you can do snippets on, you know, stories. You know what I mean? If, if you cannot do a big live video, you can take photos on Instagram. There's no way you should not be showing up anymore because what is there to hide? If you want to hide anything, I put up a post yesterday. Again, guys, you should remember this. I said, do you actually own the phone that you have? That was a trick question. All right. First of all, it was to see if people really know the perception of privacy. And second, it was to see how are people consuming my content? Is it from laptops or is it from um, phones? And from that question alone, I figured out a lot of people are find and finding my information from mobile phones. So I'm going to make sure that all the content I put out there is mobile compatible. All right. Thank you so much for making me realize that. And at the end of the day, that's how social, you know, prosperity is. You find out from the people that are your potential customers, what they're doing, how they're doing it, and then, you know, regurgitate it back to them. Because how else are you going to know? Have you ever noticed how these days, all these big companies, they give you all those point systems, um, you know, all those uh, reward systems so that they look at what your expenditure is like and they look at what it is exactly that you're spending money on so that they give you more of that. They're studying you. All right. So that is all the social entrepreneurship that we're entering into. So for you to actually win at this, you got to now start polishing up your reputation because it's going to be your best asset. Like I said earlier on, guys, that Google, you are who, what Google says you are. Okay? So just calling yourself an entrepreneur or a CEO might be all right for your ego. You know what I mean? It, it makes you feel good. But at the grand scheme of things, guys, what matters more these days is how much do people trust you? Judith says they stalk us. Nobody stalks you. Nobody cares about you. Let me tell you the whole truth. You think you've got stalkers. If you own a business, you're going to need stalkers because how are people going to know what you sell? But if you're not a business person, then you will think you've got stalkers. But if you have a business, you're going to want people to come to your shop. Because if you're not coming to your shop, if nobody's coming to your shop, it will suck. So I think, Judith, I don't know what your business is. Let me know if you've got a business there. Because if you're afraid of stalkers, then you're not going to survive this entrepreneurial edge. That's why Facebook gives you those five photos at the beginning to put those ones there so that people don't go snooping in your photos. They just see what you put out there for them. You know why? People are too busy. No one is going to wake up every single day and start looking out for you. 
Unless you're in high school, maybe. Nobody cares about you and that's a fact. You got to make people care. And the way you do that is you polish up your reputation and that then becomes your greatest asset. We all need haters. Uh, that's what Stephen says. And if you don't have haters, then you're not pushing the boundaries hard enough. Ah, Zetemondo. That is absolutely correct. If you don't have anybody asking you questions, you're not doing enough. If you don't have people wondering because your values, you're not projecting enough. There's no oomph in any of your try in your in, in whatever you're trying, so you're not gonna triumph. All right. So you know you, you might call yourself a CEO today. You know it might be good for your ego. But the grand scheme of things, guys, is what matters more is how much people are going to trust you, how much they know you, how much they're going to refer you to other people, and how much anyone knows anything about you, right? So it's going to be about the aura that you give around you, the people that are working around you, etc., etc. And, you know, what other people think you can do is much more important than what you think you can do. Because no one is going to hire you if they don't think you can help them. Because everyone is always looking for a way to go away from their pain. And if no one knows that you can help them, then there's no way that they're going to contact you to save them from, from their pain. All right. So I think there's another person that wrote about stalking and whatever. You know, your personal life is now public now, guys. If you're going to be a social entrepreneur and make any coin online... You know what I mean? You know, we, we, with the advent of the internet, you know, social networks, things to do with your personal life can actually affect your success in a really big way. Just try and mess up today. You know what's going to happen? You're going to hide. And the more you're hiding, the more you're hiding from your clients. So you want to make sure that you have managed all your social, you know, people around you, your family. You don't have any, you know, dramas that are just going to pop up out of anywhere. Because if you're not good up there you're not going to be able to project you're not going to be able to present yourself in front of people and that people can see it you know what i mean so you want to manage your whole brand image rather than ignoring it okay and then you know even the smallest things like the way you actually behave you know your online presence or the lack of it thereof you know what i mean uh, whom you associate with all that stuff will help you build your brand etc etc and um, Judith says, we're saying stalkers in a jocular way, think retargeting and companies who know your spending habits. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because they, they're stalking you. That's, you have their money. They need to get it out of you. So that's why it's not stalking. It's actually business now. That's why I was saying yesterday, do you think you actually own your phone? Because you don't. Your phone is owned by the people that are, consistently sending you all those messages to buy from them. Because if you owned your phone, then you would control who see who sends you what. You know what I mean? So it makes more human to show your personal life. People connect better. Exactly. You know, people really want to see you building a positive presence, you know, in the new media these days. You know, there are plenty of benefits of, of, of what we have with social media. Because let me tell you something, outside of the world here, People are looking at death every single day. Death of them, death of the economy, death of, of, of everything they have known. So if your presence on social media is that little corner or nook that they can hide in for two seconds and forget their worries, you've won them. Right? So you want to build a positive presence, you know, in the new media. All right? Your online and social network should enable people to actually, you know, you know, be around you. Kiran says hello from Bhutan. Hello, how are you? You know, you're creating your reputation. You're connecting with other people that have interests similar to you. You're finding educational opportunities. You're finding mentors in the social prosperity age. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and have you noticed that people are, um, are living a bit longer these days? 
you know, and, and people are starting a bit earlier in the whole uh, entrepre uh, entrepreneurial journey. We hear of 12 year olds that are already entrepreneurs. We hear of 95 year old, you know, investors, you know, there's still people like Warren Buffett that are still in the, in the zone. The whole age grade range has grown. So you have to know how to play with people within, you know, all those ages, as long as they are your customer, as long as they are your market. All right. So the combination of, you know, that whole economic need and the increasing lifespans for people, guys, is keeping everybody either within the workplace or in the entrepreneurial phase. So as a result, you're going to have to work well with people of all ages. Each generation is different. You know, there's millennials, there's the other ones, there's the baby boomers, and then there's the generation X. Now there's this generation I don't know what. Right, so each generation tends to communicate differently and it offers, you know, totally different view of the marketplace. If you really want to, to succeed, you got to carve out who are you speaking to, how are they receiving your message and why should they care? And that's how social, um, you know, you know, this whole social entrepreneurship and social uh, period is going to work. And Steven says, so a uh, 14 year old cash me aside girl is an Instagram millionaire now. Yeah, exactly. So you, you can learn from those people as well. But if you don't have the social skills or the, the strong mindset to know that you can, you know, reverse mentor from somebody like that, how are you going to know what's affecting them? If you really want to see that we're fooling ourselves here, there's a whole big underground of, you know, 10 to 14 year olds that are actually making and exchanging money and deals. Go to an app called Musical.ly. Does anyone know about that? Um, an app called Musical.ly. We get, you know, 11 year old with like 15 million followers. That's attention. And you know what attention is? That's the social economy because he's got social currency. He's got people watching him. And we, we're just here, you know, playing around on social media and just knowing the same circles and, you know, just getting really, um, you know, just getting really frustrated. But we're not really venturing out there. We are not doing enough with the whole social entrepreneurship, guys. You really got to put your brand out there a little bit more. I, I want you guys to succeed. I really wish the best for everyone that's following me. And if I'm doing something wrong, don't hesitate to come around and be like, mm, prosper, prosper, prosper. You're going a little bit off bounds. But you know what? I, if I listen to you, you're lucky. Because I feel like right now there's, there's no right or wrong way to do these things. As long as you're connecting and you're relating to people that actually vouch for you, I think you're winning. You know what I mean? There's no longer, this is the secret. This is the way to do it. You just go out there and create. And if somebody can relate to that, then they should pay you money. And I think the last but not least thing, the one person with the most connection is going to win in this, um, you know, social entrepreneurship um, edge. This social prosperity edge, the person with the most connection is going to win. So you're going to have to know how to relate to people in different age groups. You know why? Because when the other older people are moving up, you know, you still have the younger ones so that they continue buying from you and they, you're not running out of leads and th things like that. But as you can tell, we're not talking about people who are just, you know, looking for the next shiny object. I'm talking about people who really want to build a business. And guess what, guys? In the social, um, you know, prosperity age, the prosperity blueprint is going to be your only weapon. You're going to have to know how to capture those people, figure out what their pain is and give them a product that actually suits them. Then you go in and connect with them. You're going to engage them. They don't know what's out there. They don't know. You got to educate them. All right. And provide them with value so that they realize that you're the person that can solve their problems. From then on, you're going to go and convert them, all right? After you've, you, you, you've given them all that value, convert them and then continuously connect with them on a social prosperity level. This is the online prosperity blueprint, guys. You want to get your hands onto this. When I created this, I didn't realize that it was going to be this revolutionary. But now we're moving into an age where it doesn't matter. You have a Facebook page. You got to have a face. All right.
And guys, these days it's not about going in for 500 people. Even just one person that you can change their life dramatically. Guys, I don't want to lie. It will definitely change the scope of your business. Testimonials and people really raving about your business. That's the way to go now, guys. All right? You know, hours are now out. What you've accomplished, you know, people need to start realizing you are the person that's going to save them and help them, you know, market scale and grow their businesses. If you really, really want to grow your business, guys, stop thinking about how much hours you're working. Aim for milestones, aim for traction, aim for connection. Wisdom says, yes, pain points, content is king, but context is king, add value. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, it's no longer about the hours you're working. It's the lives that you're changing that make a whole lot of sense. Success is more results, not the work that you're putting in. Measure your results by the amount of people you're actually helping. Thank you so much, Ray Ring. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you a lot. Help others realize your value. With that said, guys, I want to welcome you to the social prosperity edge come on board